in this video, we're going to be going through the method engineering workflow within InspireCast. This will be focused on a, um, a gravity cast part. This could be die or, or sand cast. Um, to begin with, we're just going to look at a, a few slides. So uh, method engineering is obviously where we are coming up with the best method to fill the part. So hopefully we can reduce or remove errors and also improve yields. Um, the workflow potentially could look something like this. So generally, you all have um, designed a part or you may have got sent a part. So the first step is always import the part into InspireCast. And uh, you most likely will have a good idea of how you want to fill the part based on the shape and size and your past experience. But you could also get a grasp on how the part may solidify by running a solidification only analysis. This potentially could guide you on thicker areas of the model and potentially best gate locations or other components such as risers. Note, when um, running a solidification only, this is presuming the whole part is the same temperature and fully liquid when it starts to solidify, so only use this as a guide. In reality, we know that um, some areas may freeze before the part fully fills, and also obviously we are going to get different temperature variations based on gate locations and other, other factors. Um, in this video, we can see how the part solidifies, so this is last liquid areas, so we can see some areas are last to solidify this could potentially be good locations for um for risers to try and draw out any of that porosity step two in the method engineering workflow might be to create a quick um, quick method using inspire cast to actually add some gate locations and other components um, so based on the results that we had from the solidification i'm going to um, fill this from the bottom so hopefully i get a nice laminar uh, flow it when it fills and I'm also going to add some risers to the left and right lo locations where that porosity was. Based on that we are still getting porosity and so another thing you may do is increase the riser size. In the third image we can see that riser size has been increased but it is still it's decreased the amount of um, shrinkage slash porosity we're getting um, but there is still some in the model. The final step would be to refine your method. So refine your method and generally you might design this in your preferred CAD system um, and then it bring this back in into InspireCast and then run it. Here, obviously, we're trying to match the exact conditions to reality, things like fill time, temperatures, pouring temperatures, mould temperatures, mould materials, everything you want to get matched to it exactly as it is to reality in order to get the most accurate results. We're now going to um, go into the software and um, show you this workflow within InspireCast. So this is the um, InspireCast um, software. I'm not going to dive too deeply into the user interface, um, but you have your tabs along the top, file, pretty familiar, edit, window, shortcuts, view, just how you like to view things. You've got your sketch tab that allows you to create basic sketches and geometry. And then you've got your geometry tab for doing 3D modifications on either the cast part or your, or your method. The final tab is the casting tab. Here we see InspireCast five-step workflow, designating your cast part, Add in your gates or defining your gates, add in your casting components. Uh, then you have your setup. So you've got your gravity process in there. We also have investment casting and um, tilt pouring. Um, we've got high pressure and we've got low pressure. Finally, we have your run analysis. Here you've got your, your mesh settings and what sort of analysis type you wish to run. So the, um, the first step is to open a model. and now we can start the method engineering workflow so because we're only going to run a solidification we only need to designate the cast part and the mold so i'm going to just leave these as defaults but here you can specify your material your grade and your material pouring temperature also we can specify gravity direction if we do have a filling system which we don't at the moment we can also designate that um, the next, the final component I'm going to add in this is the mould. So obviously the mould component is quite important, depending on whether we're doing die casting um, or sand casting. Um, you've also got your mould temperatures, so obviously they will affect your um, results. So I'm just going to presume this is a sand cast part, and then I can go on to the analysis stage. So I'm only going to run a solidification analysis here. We can choose our element size. We can also go on um, wall thickness, but generally you want two elements in at least two elements in any wall section. So I might choose uh, an element size of four mil. 
I'll click the run tool and this will then go into the meshing stage which is first obviously converting this CAD model into uh, the mesh elements and then it'll go into the solidification stage. So rather than wait for the results to finish we can just snap to the results. Here we have the solidification results that we previously looked at in the video. Some of these result types may not be of too much value here, things like temperature, because it's not going to be too accurate to the, the temperature that we were using. But the things that we could look at is solid fraction, so last liquid areas, and we can play this animation and we can start to see where these last liquid areas are. So we can see here we are getting, um, these areas are clearly not symmetrical and we are clearly got, have a thicker region here. So maybe we want to try and draw out that prosody. So based on these result types, there are other things that we could also look at. Um, we can then go back into our model and start to come up with a method. So when method engineering, we can now use the software to potentially define some locations, gate locations. Um, so I'm going to add four gate locations on the bottom of this part. I can change the shape to rectangle. And I'm going to change that to 15. I'm going to add one here, one here, one here, and I'll change that back to, and so on. So we've got our four gate locations now. I'm going to accept that. And then I'm going to add um, some more casting components. So with this part, we've also got a core. So I'm going to let the software create a core. Obviously, if your core is different material, um, that's important because they're going to have different thermal properties and your core temperature. And then finally, I'm going to use the software to allow me to create some uh, risers. So I'm going to create some risers here. Let's just change the size of them. And another here. So these are just software created risers. This is again just guiding you. It might not be your final method. Generally, you might create that in your CAD system so it matches the, 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 the riser shapes and sizes that you use. So now we've got this, uh, we can now also run a filling analysis. So if I click here, we can run a filling and a solidification. This compute deformation is just allowing us to, um, if we wish to compute residual stress, um, so we can find out the residual stress in the part after solidification. Um, and also deformation. So I'm going to click the run tool again. And again, rather than wait for these results to finish, we can just start to look at those in here. So my second run, we can see here, we can now look at how the part fills. So this is one with the smaller risers, we can see the outline of the larger risers in the background. So that's the how the part fills and the temperature evolution as the part fills. Um, th other thing, um, things, result types that may be useful at this um, this stage, especially if you're, this is sand casting, so obviously air can escape. If you're doing die casting, things that might be really useful, things like last air and also airflow, so you can actually see potentially airflow, air loca locations where you might get air entrapment and that could cause um, obviously defects in your casting. Um, we can also use solid fraction so we can see areas that are actually starting to freeze before the part is fully filled. So we can see these blue areas are actually starting to freeze before it has actually fully filled and moved into that solidification stage. So there's a number of other result types that we can look at, but if we go into the solidification stage, again, we've got a solid fraction so we can start to see potentially any split offs. Obviously, we really want these in the risers. So we are getting a large split offs here and here. So that generally will probably lead to some porosity. So we are seeing some porosity here. If I look at total shrinkage volume, um, we can also put some call outs and actually measure that volume. So as the method advances, one of the method that um, was tried was obviously just increase the size of these risers. So you can see this is now the size of these risers. Let's see how that part fills. And you can also see your fill time here. Um, so that's how the part fills. Again, you can look for any other variables, velocities, mold temperatures, um, that sort of thing. But if we go into the solidification stage again, we're going to be sort of focusing on trying to remove this prosody. 
that's the focus with this method engineering uh, and uh, we can see here we've got more frost in the risers now but we still do have some in the um, areas where we had before and again you can put your call outs on just to get an idea of potential size of those areas so once you've explored a few different methods then you might go into your CAD system and now refine that method so now we can go back into here and we're going to open a file so this is the final method um, this may have been again designed in your CAD system uh, you can obviously use your geometry tools to make any modifications if you wish I'm going to just increase the size of that runner bar and we're going through the five step setup again just to ensure everything's set up so I'm going to, as I said I'm going to leave these as defaults I've got some casting components so now I have got some risers so I'm going to designate these as risers I've also got a filling system so I can designate this as a filling system I can add a gate and I'm going to just increase the size of that and I'm finally going to let the software create my core again change that to green sand and also create my mold component So I've got all my components created now. Um, again, we can go into the setup. When we're doing a gravity process, these are all our um, settings. So we can specify um, fill time, velocity, spoon height, flow rate. We can also do tilt pouring, and we can also specify investment casting if we wish. And um, those are your options for gravity. Now I can go on and run a filling analysis and a solidification and we'll see what the results from this are so now we've got our results and um, we can go through um, the exploration so again we can see how this part fills making sure we're getting a nice laminar flow no real turbulence there and we can go into the solidification stage so we're looking for obviously to try and reduce hopefully this frost is reduced um, you can see here that's definitely reduced but we are still seeing some frosty in this location so obviously this location is thicker so one of the methods uh, we tried again was just to increase the size of this left riser so if we snap to this second room um, we increase the size of this left riser ever so slightly didn't really do much to draw out that frosty so um, again we can refine it uh, the third run third run in this when the refine method we actually added two more components we added some chillers to this um, part you can hopefully see the outline of those chillers there by adding those chillers and going to prosty we can see that it is now pretty much removed there is a very very small amount that might be passable again we could refine this a little bit further maybe increase this left riser a, a fair bit and that would hopefully draw out that prosty from this area um, so again there are other factors you can play with but that's generally a method engineering sort of workflow within InspireCast.